It's Big 12 basketball on the WB Oklahoma City. Before they get to the big dance, they have to make it through the Big 12. The Cowboys, the Sooners, the Big 12. Only on the WB where we separate the contenders from the pretenders. Bedlam returns to the WB. Tonight, OSU and Oklahoma collide at the Lloyd Noble Center. Tip off at 8 on the WB, Oklahoma City. Thanks to you, we're one of the leading WB network stations in the nation. We are the WB Oklahoma City, the home of the frog. Victor Williams, the feisty leader of the Cowboys. He led them to victory in Stillwater. Can he lead them to victory here tonight? That's the big question. Got it away, and he got it. What a basket. Wow. That could be a technical foul right Elvis. there. Play by Cookout. Oh, I had a shot. You want a ticket for this one? You can't get it. But we're giving you a front row seat. All for free. It's the Sooners and the Cowboys. The Bedlam Series continues from the Lloyd Noble Center. The Big 12 standings make this game take out even more importance, as if that's possible. These two teams fighting for third place in a very tight Big 12 race. Well, hi again, everyone. Dave Armstrong along with Paul Split, our Bedlam Split. That's all you have to say. Now, these teams played a month ago in a, what was a classic. The close ball game went to the wire. The whole nation saw it. That game by itself would be enough to fill this building, but this has been a great rivalry. Has a lot riding on it tonight. Great matchups in this rivalry as well, and perhaps one of the best matchups we'll see all year, Hollis Price and Melvin Sanders. And, Dave, it was the big story in game one. Hollis Price, the number two scorer in this conference, was held to six points by Melvin Sanders. Sanders. Sanders, a bigger, stronger player, can go out and defend anywhere on the floor and against the quicker player. Needed some help from his teammates, but did a super job and took Hollis Price, the catalyst of the Sooners, right out of the ballgame. Great matchup in that ballgame. Probably going to be the same matchup we see him here tonight. So great matchups and a great rivalry. A rivalry that now is seeing these two teams meet for 202 times. And my goodness, it's been close over the last several years. We'll see what happens here tonight. The stage is set. The Cowboys know it's back to square one. The celebration in Stillwater, that's a distant memory. This classic rivalry is going to write a whole new script. Tonight's Big 12 basketball is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. By Phillips 66, where we put the best in our super clean gasoline, so you get the most out of your car. Think smart, think performance, think Phillips 66. By Cooper Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big 12 Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. By GMC, from professional grade people come professional grade trucks. By Jumbo Popcorn Chicken, only at Sonic, America's drive-in. And by AT&T Wireless. AT&T Wireless brings you M Life, your mobile life made better. Last year, this team went to the final four. Can they do it again? They're making a run right now, the Sooners. And Kelvin's crazy. Part of the sellout crowd on hand here at Lloyd Noble Center tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams. And for Oklahoma State, McFarland, who did not score against Baylor last Saturday. Ben Williams, Andre, and Victor. Allen and Sanders round out the Cowboys lineup. For Oklahoma, some changes. Bookout, Gilbert, Alexander, White, and Price. Ebi Arad, Jabari Brown are coming off the bench now. And the go-to guy inside, Kevin Bookout. Kevin Bookout, the first time around his first game in the Bedlam series, he looked like a veteran. They went to him early. They went to him often. He was the inside presence for Oklahoma that got them out to an early lead in that ballgame. Rarely do you go to a freshman to set the tempo for your team, but the Sooners successful in the first few minutes in the game played in Stillwater. That was a real breakout game for Bookout. Eddie Sutton wants to try to stop him. Look at his overall record in the Bedlam series. Of course, winning the earlier game in a defensive 
battle, 48-46. Kelvin Sampson knows he'd like to have a little better record against Oklahoma State, 8-11 overall in this series. But here at Lloyd Noble, Kelvin Sampson has a 6-2 mark against the Cowboys. So we're all set to go. The Cowboys in their road orange uniforms and the Sooners in white. The opening tip goes to the guys clad in orange. Dave, the first time around, ball game very physical. Both teams playing a strong, physical, man-to-man -man defense. Tough to find any kind of a shot, much less an open shot that first time around. A lot of the Cowboy fans curious how Oklahoma State will bounce back after what they describe as an embarrassing loss to Baylor last Saturday. Juanis White defensively against Victor Williams. with an advantage quickness-wise. Juanis White, a bigger, stronger player. Shot clock at the top. You bet. Victor Williams doesn't get the shot away. It's taken away by the Sooners. Well, the first defensive stand goes OU's way. Talk about the changes in the Oklahoma lineup. D'Angelo Alexander now starts in two straight ball games. Johnny Gilbert, he started ball games in the middle part of the season. Jabari Brown was out with a knee injury. Juanis White, his shot short. Sanders trying to track it down. He does have it. Rebounding will be a key in tonight's ball game. Oklahoma State was out rebounded by Baylor over the weekend. In fact, they've been out rebounded their last two ball games. Oklahoma out rebounded their last game as well. But the quote I think I loved the best from the first Bedlam game this year was when Kelvin Sampson said, We weren't just trying to get a good shot, we were trying to get any shot. And they almost got the last shot as things worked out. Look at that, Cowboys, right now. It looks like they are trying to take the air out of the ball, if you will. They're really taking that shot clock down inside 10 before they really get into their offensive scheme. Another turnover, though, and Eddie Sutton not pleased about that. Eddie Sutton's team, normally a better team in transition, likes to get out and run the ball. Not as strong in the half-court game. Oklahoma State, a couple turnovers already here tonight. And you know what was surprising in that earlier game? Even though the score was so low, 48-46, great defensive matchup. Only 14 total turnovers in that game. Eight by the Cowboys, only six by the Sooners. And another turnover by OU here. Williams, boy, puts it down with authority. That's what the Cowboys want to do. They want to come out and run the floor. Matchup on the Oklahoma offensive end has Melvin Sanders once again going against Hollis Price. And again, Oklahoma looking to go inside early to Kevin Bookout. There's the run out by Oklahoma State. Fill in the lane. Strong with the finish. That was Position basket. That was Ivan McFarlane. I mistakenly gave it to Andre Williams, but McFarlane missed the big jam. So after not scoring against Baylor, McFarlane gets the two here. Juanis White keeps it alive for OU. Similarity between tonight already and what we saw the first time around. Every shot is being contested. Did you expect anything else? Yeah, both these coaches, very good defensive coaches, love to play the man-to-man -man pressure defense. Top two defenses in the Big 12 meeting here tonight. Terrific perimeter players outside for both schools. Shot clock was at one, and Price rattles it home! Price held to the six points in that game earlier this year. The only time this year he's been held to single digits. He is the catalyst for the Sooners. Look out, will back off Williams and just plug the middle of the floor. When was the last time we saw Oklahoma State let the air out of the ball? And that's been their game plan. Allen can't get that to go. Williams tries to keep it alive, but it's Bookout who tracks it down. Alexander. Count it. Alexander. Foul is on Andre Williams. D'Angelo Alexander in his second consecutive start. Tough shooting luck earlier this year. Came in with a reputation as a terrific scorer. Oklahoma coaching staff very patient with him, and they've got a solid player coming down the stretch. So Just the freshman. Timeout, Oklahoma State. They want to talk things over with OU on a 5-0 run. Andrew Alexander really coming on strong of late. You see on the season, but of late, he's doing a whole lot better than that. He's averaging almost 10 a game over the last five. 
Hollis Price had a poor shooting game against Oklahoma State earlier this year. Got a little bit fortunate right here. Shot clock out of time. Bangs one in from about 26 feet. Well, Hollis Price in this series overall has really struggled with the exception of one game. You see the seven game totals, 9.7 points per game. He's averaged 32% from the field, 25% from three-point land. And how about this? From the free throw line, only 74%. I mean, this is a guy who shoots 94% from the line. If he scores less than 10 points here tonight, Oklahoma's going to be in some trouble. Alexander going to the line to try to complete the traditional three-point play. In the first meeting, Alexander had five points and a couple of rebounds. Six-two Sooners. These schools rank one and two in defensive points given up this year. Sanders might surprise some that Sanders has actually taken more three-point shots than Victor Williams this year. Brook out, flashing down the paint. Good rebound by McFarland. A pretty good look by the Oklahoma Sooners that time. Both passing solid for Oklahoma. Juan S. White with a foul on Victor Williams. White trying to explain to Hollis Price that he did not foul, but that's the whistle, and Williams, a 75% shooter, will go to the line. Well, you can just see the emotion written all over the faces of these players. Victor Williams has stepped up big in this Bedlam series. Maybe a raw now checking in for OU. Look at Victor Williams, not only that game-winning shot in the earlier contest in Stillwater this year, but averaging 14 a game in what has always been a very defensive-minded series. Victor Williams had a big day against Baylor on Saturday in that tough loss that Oklahoma State had. 18 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, just filling up the stat sheet. Thrown away by Allen. Allen a little out of control. Allen gets it back. In a crowd, a raw with the block. Offensively, when you get in the crowd, you got to take it into the basket. Force the contact if you can and give that official an opportunity to make a decision. White finds some space. Williams with the rebound. Victor Williams wants to run. Sanders was looking for the lob. It goes to McFarland. Allen. Allen again, and he's fouled. Cowboys want to push the action when they can run. When they're forced into the half-court game, they want to slow it down. Well, Jabari Brown with the foul, his first. What do you make of Kelvin Sampson, whose team's on a roll right now? Still going with a couple of changes in his starting lineup, bringing in Johnny Gilbert and D'Angelo Alexander and having a Ron Brown come off the bench. When it gets to this time of year and the coach is juggling the lineup, that's an indication that things are not going as well as they had hoped. Usually things are pretty well set right now. You have a set rotation, and guys know how they're going to be used. Now, Lara, too, has been struggling offensively. And they're hoping that he'll break out of his slump. Kevin Sampson saying about Lara, he said, I, I just love the kid to death, but we do need him to get going offensively. Well, it's 6-6 at the first break. So the first round ends in a draw, and we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Oklahoma State, one of six from the field so far. Oklahoma, two of six. Oklahoma State with four of their points from the line. Time now for a look at nourishing potential. Brought to you by Cargill. Victor Williams, now a senior at Oklahoma State, averaging over 13 points a game and trying to make a bid for the all-Big 12 team. Cargill, but the, the better we're fed, the more we hunger to achieve. And the assist total of three and a half a game for Victor Williams. In the game earlier against Oklahoma, Williams wound up with 16 points. Oklahoma will reset their offense in a 6-6 ball game. With Paul Splittart, Dave Armstrong had a sold-out Lloyd Noble Center. Heavy a raw. Cloud kind, the crowd kind of holds their breath when a raw shoots, hoping that he'll get back on track. I think everybody on the at Oklahoma bench hoping for the same thing. When you've got a player like Evie Ara, who's been up and down this year, using one of those down spins, you want him to have success early. Nothing better for a good offensive player than he hit that first shot. Hollis Price takes that rebound away from McFarland. Over five minutes into this ballgame, Hollis Price has just one shot taken. That's the three-pointer. There's his second effort of the night. Williams looking to push. 
Gets it to Allen. Nice flash into the paint. Sanders tries, and Bookout is there. Oklahoma State, poor shooting percentage with good looks. They're just one of seven from the floor early on. Make it one for eight now. And a lot of those shots, too, split have been close range. Both these teams would be patient on the offensive end. Really struggled for shots that first time around. That's pretty good defense when they're playing you chest to chest at about 35 feet from the basket. Why well, gets it back to Price. His three won't go. And Melvin Sanders made Hollis Price hurry that last shot. Johnny Gilbert with a foul from behind. Let's take a look at some Ameritrade scores. And Kansas leading Colorado in Lawrence in the second half. Kansas State and Baylor with a good one. Baylor, they're going to pull off another mild upset. They beat Oklahoma State last Saturday, leading by one. A&M, they're beating Iowa State at College Station by three in the second half. Here it's 6-6, and Oklahoma State has the ball. Maybe the Baylor has become the roadies of this conference. Running to Stillwater on right. Saturday. Gadsden. Sealed off by Gilbert. And on the end line, McFarlane. Gadsden could have possibly been called for three seconds as well. He was caught in the paint before he could unload that pass. White hobbling just a little bit here in this game. Of course, he hurt that knee against UConn earlier this year. Oklahoma's had some knee problems, hurting that knee just coming into the conference season. Jabari Brown missed a couple games with a strained patellar tendon. Slowed him down for the first couple games back after that injury. Hurrah. Wild one up off the glass. Williams again trying to push it if he can. Wow, what a shot by Williams. Victor Williams, just a little guy, but quick enough to take it into the bigger players and still get his shot off. That time Jabari Brown trailing the play, almost got the block, but he's just a bit late. So a 6-0 run by the Cowboys. Jabari Brown. And Sanders has the rebound. Oklahoma has worked a long time this year trying to get Jabari Brown to be effective in the 12 to 15 foot range. They don't want him just being a defensive player, a rebounder, and a shot blocker anymore. How about Melvin Sanders hustling back defensively? Big, strong player going stride for stride with Hollis Price in transition. Kind of reminds you of the movie Hoosiers when they were saying, you've got to stay on him and tell me what cut flavor gum. And he comes back and he says, it was beech nut, coach. Well, nobody knows what kind of gum Victor Williams is chewing. He's going to lead the pack <laughs> down the floor. We're just hoping to go catch up with him. Drought. Remember that Texas game? They went seven and a half minutes without scoring. That was on the road, though, not here at home. They get Texas again the last weekend of the season, the regular season. Oklahoma, at 10. Oklahoma not backing down defensively at all. Shot clock at four. Count it. That's a two-pointer. A two for Victor Williams. Blake Johnson off the Oklahoma bench had man-to-man -man coverage that time on Victor Williams. He'll give away a lot of speed and quickness, so he backed off, keeping Williams out on the perimeter. Johnson does a nice job of running this ball club. Not spectacular with the ball, but he takes care of it and distributes well. Split the Cowboys have done a really good job of making the Sooners look out of sync. Look out. That's a better look. Bookout has gotten the best looks at the basket so far this season for Oklahoma. Just like they started the game off in Stillwater. So the drought is over. Oh, you back within two, and the crowd back into it. Gadsden, nice dish inside to Miller. And Oklahoma State getting help off of their bench. Jason Miller with the feed that time from Shea Gadsden. Oklahoma State the other day went with a smaller lineup. Gatson gets the same Book out again. Picking up where he left off in Stillwater.
Jabari Brown assists each of the last two times down, dishing off to Bookout. Shane Gatson needs to get it done on the offensive end. It's the reason he's on the floor right now for Oklahoma State. Sanders, no. And looks like McFarland pulled down Hollis Price. So we've got a timeout. The Sooners showing some fight. They're going inside the book out and back within two. Let's take a moment from Bedlam to thank our Big 12 corporate partner, Cooper Tires, trying to be the official tire of the Big 12 Conference. Cooper Tires don't give up a thing. These two teams certainly aren't. Oklahoma State leading it by two right now, and Kevin Bookout picking up where he left off in that earlier meeting. Kevin Bookout has been a force inside. The last meeting, the 14 points, 11 rebounds. That's his only double-double of the season. Surprising numbers right there, but he was big in that ballgame, especially early in the ballgame. Dump down pass by Jabari Brown right there. Again, Jabari Brown in the penetration. Bookout doing a great job of moving without the basketball. When he gets it within five feet of the basket, he really knows what to do with it. And now Tony Allen man-to-man -man against Hollis Price. Melvin Sanders on the bench. Jabari Brown, no. Rebound. And Miller's got it, and he's fouled. Who's that on? Jabari? Big time battle in that time with Miller working against Bookout. It is on Brown. That's his second. Jabari Brown has been in some foul trouble this year for Kelvin Sampson's team, but when he gets in foul trouble, it's usually because of his efforts blocking shots. So Sampson has an early decision to make at the 10-minute mark. What to do with Brown with two fouls? Tony Allen has been the offensive surprise for Oklahoma State this year. Maybe their most difficult matchup because of his versatility. And they say Gatson walked with it, carried the ball. Victor Williams wants to check back in. Eddie Sutton kept his team in the locker room until midnight last Saturday after that loss to Baylor. And he really got his team's attention and focus, and what a week for the Cowboys. Oklahoma tonight, Texas at home on Saturday. McFarlane with a steal. Maybe the difference between these two teams in ballgames played so far this year. Oklahoma had a down game on the road in Manhattan, Kansas, but pulled that ballgame out against K-State in overtime. Oklahoma State's down ballgame against Baylor on their home floor, unable to pull that one out. Price went for the steal. That left Williams open. And it goes out of bounds. And it'll belong to OU. Alice Price so far in this game. One for three. He banked home that three-pointer. Allen went for the steal. Price. That one goes off the top of the top of the uh, basket and now here comes Williams Oklahoma on the defensive end working very hard trying to deny Hollis Price the basketball that time Tony Allen trying to step up and get into the passing lane Tony Allen 11 points in the earlier meeting this year Alexandre will be asked to play some big time minutes here tonight backup post player with foul troubles to Jabari Brown he has had games this year because of foul problems to frontline guys where he has played important minutes and been successful. White has it stolen by Victor Williams. Oh. Off of Oklahoma State and out of bounds. Watch Victor Williams and how he moves off the screen to get this steal. It's amazing. Well, he is very quick and he likes to gamble defensively. He will dive in, try to cut the ball handler off like he did right there. Some physical contact players knock the floor. Look how quickly Oklahoma State gets to the offensive end. Well, I love the way. So smart, Victor Williams. Instead of bumping into that screen, he went behind it, and he knew where Quantus White was trying to get to, and he got there first. Boy, turnovers have been a big part of the story here. Remember, in that earlier meeting, just 14 total. Price on the bench for Oklahoma. Ebi Ra back into the ballgame. Two seniors and a freshman out on the perimeter for OU. Ra 
Smith fell down but was pushed. And that foul is called on Sanders. Let's take a look at some Ameritrade scores, and there's an upset for you. Memphis upsetting third-ranked Louisville early. Duke, Maryland. That's a classic matchup in the ACC. And Kansas, a nine-point lead in Lawrence over Colorado. Oh, look at that. Baylor over Kansas State, now by eight in Manhattan. Sooners will get the ball back after a tie-up. The arrow gives it to them. With Paul Splitorf, I'm Dave Armstrong. We're at Lloyd Noble Center. This game has been sold out for weeks. Standing room only went on sale. 6.30 tonight, and those tickets were snarfed up in a hurry. Lloyd Noble Center will be sold out again Sunday afternoon when the Kansas Jayhawks come call it. Better than 12,000 on hand. There's the field goal shooting. A tribute to solid defense played here by both teams so far tonight. Yeah, we talked about the week for the Cowboys. The Sooners have quite a week as well. Cowboys tonight in Kansas on Sunday here. Still a lot of basketball to be played in conference play. Still a half a dozen games on the schedule. Hurrah. That might be the one to get him going. We'll see. Melvin Sanders gambled and went for the pass. Tried to get in the passing lane. Got burned on the backside. No rotation defensively that time. And you hit a wide open jumper. Sooners within one. Miller backing in. Quick little hook. That'll go. So Jason Miller averaging just three points a game, but Miller tonight already has four. Well, he is a guy that had high expectations coming into the OSU program. Did not get off to a good start, still coming back from a knee injury. That would have counted had it gone. Miller with the foul. So Alexander will go back to the line. Freshman out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. Now as Price wants to check back in, so does Ivan McFarland. I love the way Kelvin Sampson brought both Alexander and Book out along this year. These two freshmen earlier in the season Coming off the bench, now starting and really contributing. Alexander hits them both, a one-point game. And we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66, a performance brand. Roy Williams, a former Sooner grade, now with the Dallas Cowboys. Back here to see this Bedlam series. You talk about defense, you're seeing it in this game. Melvin Sanders, one of the top defenders in the league. That time, using his instincts, trying to anticipate the pass, but Oklahoma with good ball movement. And an open shot for Ebi Ra. He buries his first shot of the night. Well, Melvin Sanders, he's kept Price in check once again. Price with that one three-pointer, the bank shot. And on shot selection, Oklahoma has taken six three-pointers, has hit a couple of them. Oklahoma State, meanwhile, trying to get inside the Sooner attack. Oklahoma State with the ball, leading by one, under seven to go first half. Eddie Sutton has shuffled his players in and out, has his original starting five on the floor right now. McFarland given plenty of room, said, all right, I'll take it. Allen trying to keep it alive. Did it go off Sanders? It did. It belongs to Oklahoma. This is as loud as I've ever heard this building. Pretty cool, isn't it? Teams have played man-to-man -man defense throughout. And good defense. As the score would indicate. White. Tough shot. Well, maybe not as quick as he was earlier in the year before he hurt that knee. Tough shot hit right there in the high lane. His first basket of the game, and the crowd really comes to life. The Sooners have the lead. 
Elvin Sanders now working against Hollis Price. Sanders, a bigger, stronger player, might want to take Price inside. A push by Araw. Only five team fouls on Oklahoma. Earlier meeting between these two teams. Oklahoma State shot 39%, Oklahoma 33%. They're both under that right now. They're both at 32% for this game. What would the chances be of another ball game in the 40s? That's tough to do. Right now, looking at this score, a good chance. But even Eddie Sutton said, I don't expect this game to be in the 40s again, but I don't expect anybody to score more than 70 either. Tough scoring ball games like this. One of the things you try to do is get to the free throw line. Oklahoma has had trouble getting to the free throw line recently. Shot just four free throws at tenth over the weekend. Price off a screen. That won't go. Allen will track it down. That time, solid defense from Isla from McFarland. He stepped out to get Price as he came across the top of a pick. Sanders doesn't hit the open three. Oklahoma State has been able to get scoring opportunities in transition. Oklahoma has not been able to get it done. Good recovery and a good look from Cornish White to get it to book out. And Oklahoma on a run. And Eddie Sutton wants to call timeout. Well, Oklahoma doing a good job of balancing the floor and keeping their spacing. Want to attack the basket, but it's tougher for them to get it done because Oklahoma State has that solid defense. There's the double team. Pass out front. Look at Bookout. Adjust to the defense. Defense goes for the shot, goes for Hollis Price on the perimeter. Found himself open in the low lane. Yeah, Andre Williams went with the double team on Hollis Price, and then they didn't rotate over, and that left Bookout wide open. Take a look at the GMC professional grade player profile. And we're talking strictly basketball here, folks, not football, too. Oklahoma State, Desmond Mason doing some damage with Seattle. And for Oklahoma, Eduardo Nahara with the Dallas Mavericks. And Brent Price still playing with Sacramento. Which of these players will be joining those pros at the next level? Book out a big reason for those points in the paint. He has six of those ten. Look out so good with the position game and very good at moving without the basketball. He's got the soft hand. You throw it in there. You don't see it fall out of his hand very often. Look at Hollis Price trying to deny that ball. That was tipped so it's not over and back. And great quickness out front. Mr. Williams with the ball. Hollis Price on defense. Similar size, similar quickness, both with the feet and with the hands. Shot clock at seven. Williams. Oh, my. What a block by Gilbert. And Gilbert upset with himself because he took the big swat at it to knock it out of bounds. The whole side of the floor was open. He came from the weak side of the floor. Let's get a hand on this thing. You're going to be able to control it. Instead, he swatted it into the second row. And a look. Kind of a crowd pleaser, though. And remember, only three seconds on the shot clock. Shane Gatson will check in. Should be no problem getting a shot on an inbounds play with the ball right under your basket. Oklahoma State has to be aware that all of the players are aware of the shot clock. Gatson fires. Hits the rim, but no good. Price has it. Oklahoma has their original five starters on the floor right now. Morris Price trying to work on the picks along the baseline. Still can't get open against Sanders. Boy, almost every pass deflected. Despite all that, Oklahoma over the last three minutes and change with a 9-2 run. Found his touch again, his second three of the night. 
Oklahoma State is anticipating passes here tonight, trying to go for the intercept. Most occasions they've been able to rotate their defense and still take away the shot. Not that time. Sooners with their biggest lead. Williams doesn't like to shoot free throws, and that's where he was. Oklahoma will let him take that shot all night long. McFarland comes in to pick the pocket of Hollis Price. Fans wanted it over and back. Nobody had possession of the ball. Allen. That won't go. And right now the Cowboys in a drought. Foul on Gadsden. That's team foul number five on Oklahoma State. Ebby Ara has been struggling of late in the slump. Ara, aha, uh -huh. and it's Oklahoma by six. Well, as soon as they build a six-point lead, Oklahoma State has not had a field goal in the last three minutes and 12 seconds. Today's game is brought to you by Phillips 66, where we put the best in our super clean gasoline so you get the most out of your car. Think smart, think performance, think Phillips 66. Split one of the things Oklahoma's doing much better than they did in Stillwater is shooting that three. They're three of seven from three-point range, and Ebi Ara has a lot to do with that. They were three of 12 in that earlier game, and that's where Ara went 0 for 2 on trays and 2 for 10 overall. Oklahoma is getting some balance. If they can get the ball in the hands of Ebi Ara, he is finding open shots. Hollis Price is not. They've got to keep Book out going inside. White for three. Here comes Williams, pushing it with Sanders. Williams goes coast to coast. Nobody ever took away his dribble. They were looking for Sanders on the wing. Figured Williams was looking for him on the right ring as well. A little breakdown for Oklahoma. That's one of the cardinal rules. Take away the dribble first. Maybe Rye acts like he wants the ball. Yeah, it's a good observation. Misses that one off the heel. Oklahoma was hoping that Ara had broken out of a slump for, of course, about three or four games, but the last couple outings, he hasn't done well on the offensive end. Well, Jansen throws up an air ball. Price goes around Williams. Miller with a foul. Well, Oklahoma State is normally a team that is better in transition than they are in the half-court game. Great athletically, tremendous speed. Melvin Sanders on the right wing. Oklahoma anticipating the pass rather than the drive from Victor Williams. He lays it over the front edge. Looks like Hollis Price there was trying to gamble a little bit, assuming the pass would come to Sanders. He was cheating, and Victor Williams caught him. Hollis Price at the line is Mr. Automatic. You see what he's done. In his points on the year, and in the Big 12, he's averaging 20 a game, Big 12 games only. At the line, 94%. In the Big 12, 97%. You talk about his importance to his basketball team. Played 39 minutes over the weekend out of Texas Tech. Whew. Williams, and he's fouled. Victor Williams that time got a step on Hollis Price, who was guarding him. Hollis Price, anticipating the pass, was beaten to the baseline. Well, Victor Williams will be going to the line. Williams in this game so far, eight points to go along with four rebounds and an assist. Next free throw would put him into double figures. Coming up at halftime, we'll look ahead at the weekend schedule, and we'll also check in on other scores from around the Big 12, plus scores from around the top 25. And then we'll also take a look at Andre Emmett in that one-game suspension and how his teammates react to all that. It's amazing that Melvin Sanders with his size can go out and play that kind of defense on the perimeter. The lob in to book out. Perfect pass from Price. book out and he just took it away 
Well, they talk about freshmen this kind of year really not looked at players like they're in their first year players or freshmen. They're pretty much sophomores. Price for three. And Oklahoma on a run. Terrific possessions on the offensive end. Stops on the defensive end. They've widened the gap to nine. Johnston. That's a foul, and that'll put Gatson at the line on a one-and-one. How is Price probably thinking? That's probably as free of Melvin Sanders as I've been in the last nine weeks. He has not had many open looks, and even when he has had an open look, it has been rushed. Price tonight, eight points, two of three from three-point range. Of course, that other one was a little uglier. That was pure, the last one. Shane Gatson going to the line, 78% on the year. Remember, this is a one-and-one. One. He'll get the bonus. Melvin Sanders, he is the defensive stopper not only in the Big 12, but I think in the country. And look what he has done to some quality scorers around this league. Put Brandon Mouton's name in there. Kenny Taylor of Baylor would be another guy you could put in there. He could write a book about the top scorers in this league. Free throws. Oklahoma State 7 of 7. Oklahoma 5 of 5. If you remember that earlier meeting, Oklahoma State was 9 of 16, Oklahoma 7 of 15. And let me update it on Oklahoma State. Now, that's not a pass. Oklahoma State's got 8 of 8 from the line. Sometimes you got to get a little bit lucky. And Jabari Brown, kind of a sheepish look on his face. Oklahoma with a break right there. Do you really give him an assist for that? I think you have to, don't you? <laughs> You see the, both the game clock in white and the shot clock in red. And Jabari Brown says, not in our house. Well, not in his lane. He is the kind of guy that it's a terrific defender away from the ball. And he just hovers on the weak side of the floor and looks to help out defenders on the ball side. Five blocks for the Sooners in the first half. And they'll get Brown out of there with those two fouls. In the last second, you don't want him to pick up a third. So a lot of time on the shot clock. It's at 12 for OSU. An important possession here. Sanders, no. McFarland, good rebound. Tenacious on the glass. Oklahoma State maybe didn't get as good a shot as they needed to. Had more time maybe than they realized. Alvin Sanders forced a shot, as did McFarland. Andre Williams is second foul. That's the seventh team foul on Oklahoma State. So Quantus White will go to the line. Boy, what a game he had against Texas Tech. 23 points, eight rebounds, six assists, only one turnover. Everybody talks how Kelvin Sampson is going to miss Hollis Price when he graduates at the end of this year. I think he's going to miss Quantus White as much. And that's saying a mouthful. He keeps his team's record on what they are with Juanis White at the point guard position. And it is incredible. Still not a missed free throw in this game. Whoop, didn't mean to jinx him. Just worked out that way. Uh, it works out well for Oklahoma. They got a chance for the last shot, and it looks like they're going to play it that way. Looks like the Sooners are going to go in with a double-digit lead. Book out. Good spacing by the Sooners, and they'll roar into their locker room. The Sooners hip-hopping their way up the tunnel. These fans ecstatic. The Sooners close the half on a run and lead it by a dozen. Welcome to the ESPN Plus Halftime Report. Time now for the Phillips 66 Player of the Week. Honors go to Lawrence Roberts. The Big Bear had 20 rebounds in Baylor's upset of Oklahoma State on Saturday night. In the first half, Oklahoma warmed to 43% shooting. 
And Oklahoma State stayed cold the entire first half, only 23%, and the Sooners lead by a dozen. This isn't the only game going on in the Big 12 Conference. Other action, it's Kansas winning, so the Jayhawks now go to 10-1 and one in first place all by their lonesome in the Big 12 Conference. Their win over Colorado. And look at Baylor in the second half trying to hold off Kansas State in Manhattan, leading by five, and Texas A&M with a six-point lead at College Station over Iowa State. On Monday night, Texas Tech benched Andre Emmett and Nick Valdez for a missing shoot-around. In reality, it was unlikely either was going to start or play anyway, and it wasn't Coach Knight's decision. The players had something to say about it. First, they didn't deserve to play. The way they played at Oklahoma and the stuff they pour, they just don't deserve to play. We didn't want them to play today. As a team, we didn't want them to play. As bad as we had to win on Saturday and much for on the line, and the way they played, we voted that they didn't deserve to play today. The thing that happened today with Emmett and uh, Valdez, uh, did, that was not the reason Emmett didn't start the ball game or play. I mean, I'm not sure he would have, I know he would not have started the game today, and I'm not sure he would have played based on the performance last Saturday. So some strong words, not only from Coach Knight, but from the team as well. Here at halftime in the Bedlam Series, it's Oklahoma leading Oklahoma State by a dozen. Time now for the Sonic Flashback, brought to you by Sonic, America's drive-in. 64-61 Missouri, two seconds to go. Cowboys with a basketball. Reeves. Big Country hit his first three-pointer of the season, sending the game against Missouri in overtime. The Cowboys would eventually be victorious. Welcome back to the ESPN Plus Halftime Report. This week's Classroom Champ brought to you by Phillips 66. When it comes to convenience and value, it's at the top of its class. And hats off to Josh Cronkey, junior out of the Missouri Tiger program, majoring in consumer family economics and a GPA of 3.43. Right now at the half, it's the Sooners leading it 34 to 22. Now it's time for the SBC Conference call. Big weekend in the Big 12. As far as title talk is concerned, both Oklahoma teams have big games this weekend. Oklahoma State is hosting Texas. The Longhorns won the first meeting in Austin. Lost tonight and Saturday pretty much eliminates the Cowboys from the race for the title. On Sunday, Roy Williams and his Jayhawks come here to Norman. Kansas playing the best of anyone in the conference, but this could be the stumbling block to even them up with a pack. For Texas A&M and Texas Tech, when it comes to their NCAA hopes, Bernard King and his scoring head to Lubbock, where Andre Emmett, will he be back in the lineup for, a, for Texas Tech? Now, Missouri and Colorado in the same spot. Quinn Sanders Tigers should have the bid locked up. Going to see you can make it look bad. A win for the Buffs, give them their third home win over a ranked opponent in Big 12 play. Welcome back to the Lloyd Noble Center here in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm Dave Armstrong. Paul split up and split that first half. It looked like Oklahoma warmed up. Oklahoma State never did. Oklahoma got pretty good looks in that last few minutes of the first half where they started to take charge in the game. Nice combination of inside handling for Kevin Book out doing a good job moving without the basketball. And uh, Ebi Ara had some good shots. Now, Oklahoma State, they had good looks early in the half in transition. Didn't get shots to go down. Kind of four shots inside that last five minutes. Maybe panicked a little bit late in the first here we go with about three weeks to go to the Big 12 tournament and this Saturday another exciting weekend of Big 12 conference play. You and I are going to be in Stillwater to watch the Longhorns and the Cowboys before that meeting. Many of you will see Texas A&M and Texas Tech or Kansas State and Iowa State and of course our game at 3 o'clock Central Time. It's Texas and Oklahoma State. And in between and before and after all this, it's Doug Bell and Chris Piper in Studio 66. Here from Norman, we're at halftime, and the Sooners lead by a dozen. Well, our score here in Norman, the Sooners on a late run take a 12-point lead. Second half coming up. 
Other uh, scores from around the top 25 on the ESPN USA Today poll. Kentucky remains unbeaten in the SEC. They stop Arkansas and Fayetteville by 16. Memphis, the big upset. They beat Louisville 80 to 73. Close one at the half. Duke and Maryland, they're within four of each other. Xavier, a winner over LaSalle. Creighton in the second half trying to bounce back after a loss to Wichita State, leading Indiana State 77-54. Mississippi State up by 10 over Auburn in the second half. The brother scores from the Big Ten, Michigan. An upset, and that was in Purdue's backyard, 78-67 in the Big Ten. And UConn wins. They beat Rutgers in the Big East, 87-70. We'll step aside. When we come back, we'll show you some highlights and stats from the first half and get the second half underway. Well, they just got through singing, You're Doing Fine, Oklahoma, and boy, aren't they ever. The Sooners leading it by a dozen, 34-22. With Paul Splitorf, Dave Armstrong, and split the last seven minutes and three seconds, a 26 run for OU. Well, Oklahoma looked like they started to put things together both offensively and defensively, pretty much shutting down Oklahoma State from getting good looks at the basket on the offensive end. Patient, good spacing, good passing, and great movement without the ball. We thought Kevin Bookout was good in the first meeting. We'll check out some highlights from the first half and show you how good he was in the second meeting brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Dave, he leads all scorers with 12 points. You check out how he gets it done. Great speed for his teammates, but always moving towards the basket. He moves well without the basketball, plays the position game great, makes himself available for the guards. Great entry passes, good soft hands he's able to complete. 12 points, 6 rebounds, a block. He plays 18 minutes. For your insurance needs, visit shelterinsurance.com to find a shelter agent near you. Seek shelter today. Second half underway here. Oklahoma State with the ball. Trying to come back from a 12-point deficit. Halftime came at a good time for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They were losing control of the ball game. Got a chance to go get a breather, regroup, and establish a game plan for the second half. Oklahoma comes out in man-to-man -man defense. Shot clock down to five. Williams. Rebound Alexander. That's a pretty good shot for Victor Williams. Nothing else available. Oklahoma that time defending from the inside on out. Wanted to make sure they kept the orange jerseys out on the perimeter. Melvin Sampson had to be pleased with that first sequence. Cowboys forced to take a long three for getting the shot clock down to five. Melvin Sanders continues to guard Hollis Price. Andre Williams, the important assignment inside against Kevin Booker. Williams trying to front him. Price, two-pointer. Good step back by Price to free himself. And that's the last thing that Oklahoma State wanted. A lot of energy spent on defense that time. Not a terrific shot, a tough shot. Buried for the first effort by Hollis Price. And the Sooners now by 14. It's their biggest lead. Oklahoma State has not had an inside presence on the offensive end yet this evening. Seven rebounds for Booker to go along with his 12 points. Again, the lob inside, and Booker really drew a crowd. Three on one. No look. Sanders lost the handle. I know what happened early in the first half when Oklahoma State had some running opportunities. They filled lanes and either got a good shot and couldn't hit it or didn't get the shot that they wanted. Oklahoma with great patience on the offensive end. Still not a hurry. Four seconds left on the shot clock. I'm not sure they're aware of it. You gotta be kidding me. A two from Quanis White. Boy, and Eddie Sutton, I just looked over and glanced at him split. He just hung his head. He's like, well, what more can you do? You well, force him to take a bad shot and they hit it. Well, you talk about a sling and a prayer. <laughs> Oklahoma Cowboys will still have it. A 
let's take a look at the numbers from the first half brought to you by G. Well, Oklahoma heats up in the latter stages of that first half because they get better looks at the basket. Oklahoma State still struggles on the offensive end. Other than the shooting percentage, all the numbers pretty much even. shot away even if White didn't steal that. Price. Sanders recovered in a hurry. White for three. That rattles out. And a whistle and a foul. That foul is on. I believe Johnny Gilbert, and that's his third. And yep, Gilbert with three. Johnny Gilbert having a big sophomore season. Injuries early on in the year. And the book, I look at him holding his shoulder. Big time collision inside that time. Check out the action. Look at his direct, attracting a lot of attention inside, but Andre Williams in there battling for the ball. Looked like he strained his shoulder. He is still in there. Book still out. grimacing. Yeah, book out. Sore shoulder against Texas earlier this year. Still grimacing. And of course, Kansas fans can relate. Wayne Simeon missed 11 games with a shoulder injury. And that's the right shoulder for Bookout. So you wonder how that might affect his shooting. Not to mention his shot putting. Boy, the Cowboys, another long drought. And well, they haven't scored in the last 448, dating back to the last half. Eddie Sutton has watched Oklahoma go on a 24 to 6 run. Well, two things Oklahoma State needs to do. They do need to do a better job of running their offense, try to get better shots. And if you're going to be cold from the floor, you have to hope your defense is good enough on the other end to get some shutouts. Jackson draws the contact from Jabari Brown. And for Brown, it's number three. Gadsden will be going to the line. Gadsden hit both free throws he attempted in the first half. Gadsden was a starter at the beginning of the year for OSU. Played well late last year for the Cowboys. Did a good job of scoring. Take a moment to thank Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Gadsden hits one of two that trip. Oklahoma is spreading the floor, giving Kevin Book out more room to operate inside. And with spreading that floor, Oklahoma State is forced to come out on the floor to defend a little bit. Jabari Brown, really one of the quicker Oklahoma Sooners in a straight-out foot race, doing a good job of putting the ball on the floor there. Now Brown will go to the line. Under 60% on the year. Book out will get a rest. And we'll see if we see Alex Brown, the trainer, to check on that shoulder. Kelvin Sampson talking to him right now. And Kelvin Sampson wants more out of him first. <laughs> yeah, before he gets to see the trainer. Brown, no. Miller all by his lonesome. And let's see if Oklahoma State can get going offensively. Oklahoma State will look to run every time they put their hands on the ball. That's got to be their best chance on the offensive end. Struggling in the half-court game so far here tonight. Sanders. That's the first three hit by the Cowboys tonight. Sanders hit a ton of threes. In fact, he hit a half a dozen of them over the weekend against Baylor. On his way to 30 points. Came out of nowhere. This is a guy that's averaging about 16 points per ball game. Comes out with 30. Yeah. Was it tipped by Oklahoma State? It was. 
So to be Oklahoma's ball when we come back. Qantas White and the Sooners. It's fly Qantas. The Sooners leading and we're back after this from Phillips 66. Sooners with a 40-26 lead and Kevin Bookout has been a big part of it. Here's what his coach has to say about him. Well, I think he's the difference in us being a total perimeter team versus having an inside presence. I mean, he's our best interior scorer. Um, you know, you always worry about freshmen as you approach late February because of the grind. Yeah, right now he's grinded on the opponent more than anything else. They forced him to grind early in the year. Oklahoma played a very difficult schedule, and he played against some of the best big men in the entire country. So he was as prepared as he could be as a freshman for conference play. Might get another double-double. He mentioned his only one coming against the Cowboys in their earlier meeting. 12 and 7 right now. Price. Hollis Price. Price in double figures. He's got 13, and he's three of four from three-point land. Williams went into the land of the Giants. Came up empty. Here's the raw. He coaches that one home. The Sooners by 19. It's their biggest lead. Ebi Ara that time saw an advantage on the offensive end, working against a smaller player, Witherspoon, to the right to the rack. Sooners trying to keep pace with the Jayhawks and set up that big meeting on Sunday. Jayhawks already winners today. They beat Colorado and Lawrence to go to 10 and 1 in the conference. Price. He'll track it down. Brown. They're not going to give him an assist on that. A miss, but Yosef Zendre is there. But Oklahoma can do nothing wrong right now. Everything they're touching has turned to gold since the break. And the Cowboys can do very little right. Oklahoma still, or Oklahoma State still doesn't have any answers on the offensive end. Foul on Brown, and that's number four on Jabari Brown. Jabari Brown with the ball on the floor right there. Misses badly, but Joseph Zendry in there. Good rebounding position. He's in giving Kevin Book out a break. Now Book out back in there. Jabari Brown will go to the bench. Well, look at that. over the course of this season is starting to develop some depth at this both positions. Well, Oklahoma State, the first 13 minutes, they look really solid. But Oklahoma started to get hot. Right now, the Sooners on a 13-4 run. They're closing the first half on a 20-6 run. Sanders has got it. Was it tipped by Price? No, it'll go to Oklahoma. Oklahoma State desperate to get out and run. They can't get anything going in the offensive end, so you need to get something going in transition. No time for it. Oklahoma doing a good job of hustling back. Eddie Sutton, red hot now. He's given Lonnie Dixon an earful. James Dickey and Sean Sutton get in Eddie Sutton's way to get him from getting the technical. Here's what he's mad about. And well, he just got a technical while we're watching this. I don't think anybody touched that ball. They didn't. Hollis Price flashing in, trying to fill the lane. Trying to cool things down. Better an official and one of the best in the game. James Dickey trying to be the peacemaker. Trying to keep Coach Sutton from picking up in another technical and getting tossed from this game. Steve Wilmer involved in the ballgame with Lawrence Kansas. 
Bruce over the weekend. You did that one for you stay. She picked up a couple technical fouls. And it was actually Wilmer who gave him the second technical. Well, Eddie Sutton has calmed down. He just goes over to his bench to gather his thoughts. And Hollis Price will go to the line. At some point, you wonder, why do they even make this kid shoot the free throw? It's automatic. He's unjinxable. Well, you've taken a couple shots at trying to jinx him and haven't gotten it done. And Eddie Sutton roaming the sidelines up near the half-court line. Assistant coach is doing a good job of stepping in. Make sure that your guy doesn't get in a whole lot of trouble right there. Give him an opportunity to say his piece. Listen to this crowd. Built on the technical, and Price might bring the house down. That would have if that had gone. Alice Price doing a good job of using picks over the last couple of minutes to get open. Nick Williams finds this seam. And Oklahoma State continues to try to drive on that Oklahoma defense. Andre Williams working inside against Kevin Booker. It's been a good matchup all night. There's some trapping defense to force the turnover. Oklahoma State backed into a position right now to where they're going to have to gamble defensively to create turnovers. All right, Kansas with their win. They go to 10-1 and one in the conference. Texas right behind at 9-2. and two. Oklahoma trying to join them at 9-2. and two. Oklahoma State as well, but right now the Sooners with this big lead. They look to be in pretty good shape. Eddie Sutton knows that his journey won't end here in Norman this week. We'll have the Longhorns to deal with on Saturday in Stillwater. And, of course, Oklahoma getting ready to take on the first-place Jayhawks on Sunday right here at the Lloyd Noble Center. Both of these teams have very difficult games over the next couple weeks. Good move inside by Jason Miller. Oh, a little, little mini run here by the Cowboys to pull it back to 19. They had been down by 23. And Eddie Sutton shuffling the deck a little bit right now. Has a couple of backup players on the floor. They have to keep fresh legs out there because they're going to have to play pressure defense the rest of the way. Shot clock's at seven. Alexander throws up a running shot that won't go. Here comes Williams. Good look inside. And that is a difficult pass. Quantas White got a hand on it, but Victor Williams had some zip on that bounce pass and threw it right on the money. Janava Weatherspoon was right there. Williams trying to bring the Cowboys back on a 6-0 run of their own as Oklahoma calls timeout. Well, the Sooners have had their lead trimmed on a 6-0 run by the Cowboys, 49-32. Tonight's game brought to you by Phillips 66, where we put the best in our super clean gasolines so you get the most out of your car. Think smart. Think performance. Think Phillips 66. He is Paul Splitoff. I am Dave Armstrong. We are at Lloyd Noble Center. Victor Williams trying to guide the Cowboys back. Williams with a dozen points in this game. Oklahoma calling the timeout. Let's see what they come out with. Oklahoma State trailed Baylor by 15 points, came all the way back. In fact, at one time took a five-point lead late in that ball game before losing. So they came back last weekend. They'll try to do it again here in midweek. Williams! Oh, was that sweet! And they are starting to get some points in transition right now. And Victor Williams, the guy that is making it happen. They have terrific athletes out on the perimeter, and that is their ball game. Did you really expect the Cowboys just to walk away from the Bedlam series without a fight? Come on. The 23-point lead down to 15. Ara has it blocked. Well, I think we saw the intensity of their head coach, Eddie Sutton, over the last couple minutes, and I don't think he's the only one over there with some fight in Williams, a foul call before the shot. That foul on a raw. A third on a raw. And will send Williams to the line. 
Explosiveness, and he needs to use it the rest of the way in this one. Running the break right there, leading it, and forcing the action. A spin move. He's got it off the glass. He's going to have to lead the charge the rest of the way for OSU. Make it a 10-0 run for the Cowboys. So they're on their feet as they've come back to 49-36. And we're back after this from Phillips 66. Last two and a half minutes have belonged to the Cowboys, a 10-0 run. 49-36, 23-point lead once upon a time. Then trimmed at 13. And look at Oklahoma now. Oklahoma has left the door wide open for the Cowboys. Time for the Sooners to have a good possession. Blake Johnson will run the team. And trying to trap him. Gives it up to a raw. Allen will stay with Price. Oklahoma State still in a man-to-man -man defense, but looking to trap if they can get out on the wing. Allen with the pocket that was picked. Victor Williams to Allen. Miller can't get it to go. And two wide open looks inside. One by Allen, one by Miller. If you're going to come back in this one, got to hit shots like that. Boy, no kidding. Johnston, no. Victor Williams will track it down. Oklahoma looking out of sync again. Tough to come back from 13 points down on the road. Try 23. <laughs> uh, 13 right now. I gotta hope you have something left. And Allen. He has his pocket picked by Price. Hurrah! He's hit big shots all night. He sure has. Iran double figures with 11. He spurred on the first half spurt by the Sooners. Foul on Johnson. At the Lloyd Noble Center with Paul Splittoff, Dave Armstrong. Watching two top 16 teams go head to head in the Big 12 in a series they call Bedlam. Oklahoma State starting to heat up, believe it or not, at 27%. Kelvin Sampson thought that was a charge. His Sooners charged out to a 23 point lead in this game, trimmed to 13. The intensity now back the, to 16. The intensity in this building right now fans, coaches, players alike you wouldn't know it was a 16 point spread. One of the things the Cowboys might need to do split to really make the comeback look good is to try to hit some threes. Only one of six out there in this game. Miller. That's blocked by Gilbert. Nice will pick it up. One of the things that will make that more difficult, they still have not flashed that inside presence. So Oklahoma can come out and really pressure on the perimeter because they know that is the strength of the Cowboys right now. Like the Cowboys right now need to gather a second wind. Well, this is where their real strength is, is on the defensive end. They're throwing a foul. Sanders fouling Hollis Price. Only the third team foul though, on the Cowboys this half. Take a moment to thank our Big 12 corporate partner, Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's in college basketball. Is it in you?
give and go to book out. He's fouled. How about the play by Hollis Price? He comes across the top of the pick, runs into a double team. He's airborne looking for the shot. And there's the pick and the roll. Pulls out of the shot, dumps down the pass. Look out to the glass in the foul. Look out at the line, 58% this year. This is his first time to the line tonight. To go along with those 12 points you see, he has seven rebounds. He had just two points and one rebound and the ball game played out in Lubbock over the weekend. Kind of unsightly numbers for him. Mm -hmm. Double figures a half a dozen times just in conference play. And he gets the bounce. And the lead back up to 17 now. Hollis Price will be caught on defensively by Oklahoma to try to slow down Victor Williams. Great speed out front now for both teams. Every raw on Melvin Sanders. Melvin Sanders is the guy who's capable of lighting it up from long range. Williams can't get it to go, and Bookout muscles the rebound. Price flashing to the basket, and he's fouled. Boy, did he get there in a hurry. Boy, from the wing to the basket split, what a quick burst of speed. Four four from the line tonight. Pro <laughs> basketball brought to you in part by Whataburger, just like you like it. Alice <laughs> Price, if he hits this, it'll be tying the most points he's ever had in the Bedlam series for one game. Bookout, he goes to the bench with a double-double. Ten rebounds now for Bookout to go along with his 13 points. Well, the Sooners seem to have regained their form and have widened the gap once again. Sooners right now looking through rose-colored glasses. They have a 55-36 lead. Victor Williams, though, might still have something to say here tonight. Well, he's going to have to lead the way back for Oklahoma State. Playing with a lot of energy over the last couple of minutes. Had 10 points at the break. He's picked up six more here in the second half. He is the guy leading the charge for Oklahoma State. So far tonight, Cowboys have been at their best in transition when they've been able to get out and run the floor. Well, it has been a half of runs, hasn't it? Oklahoma started the half on a 13-4 run. Oklahoma State went on that 10-0 run. Well, six straight now by the Sooners. And Oklahoma State now in a position this ballgame, Dave, where they cannot afford to have any more runs against them. They've got to control the tempo the rest of the way. Victor Williams would have counted had it gone. He's fouled by Johnston. Well, you wonder with Johnson getting this much playing time split about the knee of Qantas White. We saw him kind of hobbling a little bit in that first half. Shooting the Rock brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer. Grab a rock. Three-point field goals. Sooners led by Aron Price, who have three each. Leading the way in that category. And leading on that scoreboard. 55-37. Well, you wonder about the availability of Qantas White. Blake Johnson is the player that picked up the minutes when Qantas White was having trouble in early January. But Blake Johnson has some experience, much needed experience, that he got early in the conference schedule. Price tries to save it, and he stepped out of bounds. And let's check some scores on the Ameritrade scoreboard. Now they head to the other end. Kansas, their win tonight in Lawrence takes them to 10 and 1 in the conference. Baylor, another road win. They beat Oklahoma State last Saturday and win in Manhattan. AM, they protect their home court. And the big upset tonight, Memphis beats number three, Louisville, 80 to 73. Kansas State have been playing very well at home this year. 
Good look by the Cowboys. And they get it inside. There's Quanish White back. Talking to Alex Brown about Quanish White, but he's really been amazing. Very tough playing with some pain in that knee, but that's pretty much having it close to 100%. Jabari Brown, no. Rebounded by McFarland. How many players can you name over the last seven or eight years that wore an Oklahoma uniform that were not rugged type guys? None. <laughs> so what's the surprise that Quantas White is like that? Yeah, join the crowd. Williams, is he fouled by Burkett? Andre Williams is looking to make some things happen inside. Oklahoma is pressuring so much out front that they're leaving things wide open in the middle. The Cowboy guards have been able to get it into the low post. And Andre Williams has been looking to take it to the glass. Here's the bad news, though, for the Cowboys. Andre Williams in the front end of a one and one. Andre Williams, statistically the worst free throw shooter in the conference, 17 of 49. He's not going to shoot a one and one. It's two. They say he was going up for the shot at the time. But Williams only a 35 percent free throw shooter. Oklahoma State has some very good free throw shooters on their team because of these numbers mixed in. That drops them to eighth in the league. Danny Gilbert will replace Jabari Brown. That. That's a good trip, really. Statistically for him, one for two that time. It's a 15-point game during the six-minute mark. You'd like to hit the first one because you missed the second one. You got the chance for the offensive rebound and check stands a chance for an extra possession. You always want something more, don't you? Well, at this stage of the ball game, they need something more. They need some extra possessions. Got to find a way to get extra shots, and whether it's offensive rebounds, turnovers on the on the other end, and you're going to have to be able to hit some threes the rest of the way. Victor Williams, his first foul. Only 16 fouls on Oklahoma State, so Oklahoma still not in the bonus. They will be from here on out. And Oklahoma, very good free throw shooting team. And the Ara trying to back in. Throws up a wild shot that turns into an air ball. Hollis Price. He finds Gilbert. And Andre Williams, once he realized that he was in midair, he just tried to prevent Gilbert from getting the shot away. And now Gilbert will go to the line. He's done a whole lot better than Andre Williams. He's only 36% at the line. And he is very good in close to the basket, so that's a good foul for Oklahoma State. Every rod did not give OU the kind of shot they want with 30 seconds left on that shot clock. And the bad news for Oklahoma State is on that foul, Andre Williams will have to leave the game. He has just fouled out of the contest. Oklahoma State in the last few ball games has gone with some smaller lineups anyhow and with them having to play some defense out on the floor this might be to their advantage going smaller and a little quicker. So they bid Andre Williams adieu. This senior playing his last game in Norman. They will go smaller. Shane Gadsden on the floor at 6-3. Williams at 6-8 leaves. There's Gadsden. In a sense, though, you gain more offense here, and the Cowboys need some offense right now. Shane Gadsden not nearly as good a defender out on the perimeter, but Oklahoma State's going to be forced to go to double teams and traps, try to anticipate passes. They'll need some quickness out on the perimeter. Gilbert, that looked like a good release from Gilbert, and just a little strong off the heel. Alexander checking back in for a year. Tony Allen returns. He replaces Witherspoon. Tony Allen is checked back in for the Cowboys. There he is. He's easy to spot on the court. He's wearing those orange shoes. They need to get him going the rest of the way. He's just one of ten from the floor so far tonight. Ooh. And Gilbert misses them both. So it was a good foul, even though Williams had to leave the game. Gadsden, book out. That's a shot that Gadsden usually hits. Well, how many, though, of the Cowboys missed that have danced on that rim? Little layups. 
And even if they hit just 50 percent of those type shots that they've had tonight, we've got a different kind of ball game the rest of the way. No question. Sooners in no hurry. 15 point lead. You can see the shot clock. They'd like to get it inside 15 before they put up a shot the rest of the way. A little clock management. Juanis White is fouled. He'll go to the line. Good defense that time by Victor Williams. He was back down inside the paint. Game away with the foul. His second. What did I do? <laughs> Juanis White. Five points, but eight rebounds in the game. Juanis White. I'm asking Kelvin Sampson about his free throw shooting this year. 71%. He said, yeah, but check it out in the last few minutes of a game. He hits them when they really count. And describing Juanis White. Kelvin Sampson used one word, winner. Said all we have done since Quanis White joined our program is win. Took him to the final four last year, and here they are this year at 17 and four and eight and two in the conference. Quanis White, one of several junior college players that came into the program a year ago, and Kelvin Sampson put that group together in a big hurry. They got off to a great start. Good feed from Allen to McFarland. That's where McFarland does his damage. You can't believe that Baylor shut him out the other day. Sanders shadowing Price. Picks up a foul. His third. Price going to the line. Six of six tonight. Just for fun, practice on Monday. Hollis Price took 100 free throws. Guess how many he hit? Well, practice, he's going to be in the 90s. Yep, 97 out of 100. Probably upset that he missed three. Probably was. of eight. Last guy, if you're a Cowboy fan, you want to see at the line is Hollis Price. So Hollis Price, his best game in eight Bedlam Series contests. Price with 19 points. Gadsden getting it inside. Ivan McFarland. That's a nice move offensively. Quick spin move. Stump down pass. He'll get the assist. McFarland gets the dunk. Time, though, an enemy to the Cowboys right now in trying to make this comeback. And the Sooners very smartly trying to take the air out of the ball here. Little clock management. And then they get it into the hands of Price. He can't hit, and here comes Allen. Boy, McFarland might have gotten away with a wall. Oklahoma State has to attack quickly. Attack quickly on their previous possession with Gadsden. Even quicker that time with the three-on-one break. Check out how long Kiwanis White keeps possession of the ball. Keeps breaking it down inside the lane. If he gets trapped, he still keeps possession. Alice Price, Kiwanis White will handle it most of the time for the Sooners. No basket. Book out will have to earn it at the line. So Allen picks up the foul. His first foul. Ten team fouls now for the Cowboys. So the Sooners are in the double bonus. Dave, so many things impressive about Kevin Bookout. Soft hands, able to control the ball. Strong position player. And a terrific offensive guy. Knows where he is on the floor all the time. You see the ball coming in. Soft hands to gather it in, control it, and get it on the glass. And he's been that way all season long. 15 points, 11 rebounds in this game after having 14 and 11 against the Cowboys in Stillwater. Oklahoma at the 322 mark with a game in hand.
everywhere you went in Norman today, people were saying, well, Hollis Price has to step up for the Sooners tonight for them to beat the Cowboys, and he has. Well, it's rare that he doesn't step up, but he's been challenged by Melvin Sanders all night long. He's ran Sanders and other Cowboys all over the floor. Did not have a good shooting night in Stillwater earlier this year. They figured that he was going to come out very focused tonight. Look at these numbers, 19 points. And Oklahoma in a position to close this one out. And he's six in that earlier meeting. He scored 17 against the Cowboys last year here in Norman. And now 19 tonight. Oklahoma now in a matchup zone. First time they've shown zone here this evening. Allen had a look at a three. Now Sanders will take it. That rims out no good. One for seven, the Cowboys from three-point range. Wide open look for Melvin Sanders who had a huge day from three-point land over the weekend against Baylor. A hold on the part of Bookout, and they're going to send McFarland to the line. Well, coming up Saturday, we've got a great doubleheader. A&M and Texas Tech. Some of you will see Kansas State and Iowa State, and then Split and I'll be in Stillwater. Fourth-ranked Texas and Oklahoma State. Texas at 9-2, trying to keep pace with Kansas, who won tonight. They go to 10-1 and in sole possession in first place. The winner of this game will go to 9-2, and, and the loser will drop down to 8-3. and three. McFarland can't hit the free throw. Allen trying to keep it alive. It goes out of bounds. It will... Let's see. They were pointing towards Lonnie Dixon, the lead of Lonnie Dixon, the lead official there, may have gotten the best look at this. He's talking it over with Steve Welmer. Get together and come out with a call. Looks like the Cowboys are going to get it back, and once the crowd figures this out, they won't be happy, and neither is that man. Some magic right now. Mr. <laughs> Williams slips down, and they've got a foul on White. Tough call right there for Kiwanis White. He's trying to play the solid defensive position. Trying to keep Victor Williams out on the floor. Stumbles as he's retreating into the high lane. And Victor Williams fell over his feet. Now Williams at the line. He's 7 of 8 tonight. What a, another good game in the Bedlam series for Williams. Look at that. 17 points. He also has 6 rebounds. Well, a couple of missed free throws. One by McFarland. Now one by Victor Williams. When the Cowboys need the most. Oklahoma State will take a 30-second timeout. 2.27 remaining. Cowboys still with a couple of timeouts. The Sooners really don't need timeouts, but they still have three. Big 12 basketball brought to you by Phillips 66, where we put the best in our super clay gasoline so you get the most out of your car. Think smart, think performance. Think Phillips 66. Buy Whataburger just like you like it. SBC, ordinary people, extraordinary jobs. Buy Shelter Insurance. For your insurance needs, visit shelterinsurance.com to find the shelter agent near you. Seek shelter today. By your local Jeep dealers, test drive a Jeep today. And by NikeBasketball.com. Victor Williams trying to figure out this little slide by the Cowboys. They've lost three of their last five. And right now, Eddie Sutton trying to see if his Cowboys can pull out a little magic here in Norman. Hard part against the Sooners, they're so good at clock management, plus they're so good at the line if you foul them. Well, they're strong at their guard position, Dave, and you've got to have good ball handlers, guys that handle it. Strong enough to fight off that defender out front. Oklahoma 
good size with heavy Rao with the ball right there. Kiwanis White. Any one of three guys can dominate this thing for OU the rest of the way. Hollis Price also on the floor. And all those guys, good free throw shooters. White. And that won't go, but the good news for the Sooners is they wasted 30 seconds of time. Now that's the bad news for the Sooners. They stopped the clock. Quantus White with a foul. And that will be his third. And Janaba Weatherspoon will go to the line. Weatherspoon on the floor because he's got great quickness. Tremendous leaper. Played just four minutes in their last game against Baylor, but called on here tonight to help them defensively. Try to force some turnovers. Transfer from Odessa College. Originally from Camden, Delaware. Chance to get the Cowboys within a dozen. That was the halftime edge for the Sooners. McFarlane. There's a scrum, and Allen comes away with it. McFarlane. Oh, he missed the layup. Abby Arraw gets back in bounds and handles it. Closing moments from Lloyd Noble Center. The Sooners trail early in this game, but win on a 20 to 6 run to close out the first half and have kept the Cowboys at arm's length in this game. Now just trying to dribble out the clock nearing the one minute mark. Oklahoma State had shot three throws extremely well tonight up until the last couple of minutes. Price puts the final nail into the Cowboys. Hollis Price, 22 tonight. And what you just saw there, last couple of sequences for the Cowboys offensively, if you're just joining us, it's been that kind of game for the Cowboys. Point blank shots that just would not fall. So in the Bedlam series this year, a win for the Cowboys in Stillwater and a win for the Sooners in Norman. And now the Sooners can look ahead to their Sunday matchup with the Kansas Jayhawks. Oklahoma State, they'll look ahead to Texas. A good win, a solid win for these Sooners here tonight. in the tournament in Dallas. And they still have a lot on their plate this weekend. For Eddie Sutton and his Cowboys, it's Texas. For Oklahoma, it's Kansas. Again, thanks for joining us for Big 12 basketball. Once again, our final, Oklahoma wins at 64-48. Join us Saturday for the Big 12 doubleheader, starting at 12.30 with Studio 66. For Paul Splitarf, Dave Armstrong, and our entire crew here, saying goodnight from Norman, Oklahoma. The preceding has been a presentation of ESPN+, Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.